What's up everybody, welcome back for another vlog. We've got a couple incidents to tell you about that happened over the past week. And the first one was actually a car that hit a house early in the morning. And that was in the city of Centennial. Rescue 34, ladder 12, engine 15, medic 15, medic 12, battalion chief 2, safety 18, Metcom Ops 3, MBA structure involved, map page T24D 7242, South Franklin Street. When Station 15 arrived, they found a car up against a split-level house, and the house was occupied at the time that it was struck. Thankfully, no one inside the house was injured. They all evacuated outside safely, and the driver of the car also refused medical treatment, so nobody was hurt. But the technical rescue team came in, and uh, crew members from Rescue 34 worked on stabilizing the structure and used a double T-brace to do that, and they assembled it on site. So they're prepared to do that with Rescue 34, and if we ever had a more major incident with more of a collapse component, then we would call Collapse 45, and they're the second piece of the technical rescue team that's on duty every day, and they carry far more equipment to uh, do that for structural stabilization and for trench collapses and, and things of that nature. We had a couple of questions come in on social media after our last vlog where cars had hit restaurants about how that worked and, and how tech rescue works at South Metro. So every day we have technical rescue team personnel on duty, uh, at least at both of those stations at 34 and 45. And a handful of our members are actually members of FEMA's Urban Search and Rescue Colorado Task Force, and they will deploy across the country to major emergencies. Most, free, most frequently they're going to hurricanes, but going back years past um, September 11th in New York City and also the Oklahoma City bombing, South Metro had members on scene of that. So we do have a team and we are able to respond. It's one of the few that are in the South Metro Denver area, so it's not uncommon for our team also to be called outside of our district borders if there's a major incident that's occurring and some of our neighboring fire departments need help. Our second incident to tell you about was a very early morning apartment fire in the city of Littleton on South Prince Street. Firefighters got on scene. It was in Station 11's first due area. They saw flames coming out of a third floor balcony of an apartment building. Ladder 12, engine 11, engine 16, medic 11, battalion chief 2, safety 18, Metcom Ops 3, unconfirmed multifamily structure fire, map page R21D 5873, South Prince Street, Unit 311. Rescue 34, Tower 18, Engine 13, Engine 38, Medic 12, Battalion Chief 1, confirmed multifamily structure fire. Metcom Engine 11. Engine 11. We got a working structure fire on the second floor. It's extending to the third floor on the Charlie side. We're working on evacuation. Engine 11 will be the offensive strategy. Fire attack. The uh, alpha side. 360 is complete. Medic 11, reposition that line to the right. Ram Sir Ragland and Orr. Start random people to parking lot. Get to the parking numbers are in. Medic 11, repeat, last transmission. FMDU 33, confirmed multi structure fire. Map page R21D5873. South Prince Street, Unit 3-11. SMDU-33, confirmed multifamily structure fire. 
Firefighters started off with a transitional attack on the third floor of the structure. Flames were coming out of the balcony on the outside of the building. Crews at the same time were going interior with a hose line into the unit where the fire had extended. Also at the same time as that, we had crews doing searches to make sure everyone evacuated safely. They did ventilation to make sure that the smoke was getting out of the units that were affected. Red Cross also came on scene and helped three families who were displaced by this fire. A lot of you had asked us some questions about why there were ambulances parked next to the apartment complex that was on fire. Well, that was because a private ambulance company has their location right there. They were able to move some of their ambulances from the garage over to a parking lot in order to uh, make sure they were safe, but the other ones were still parked right there next to the building. Thursday evening, our neighbors to the west in Jefferson County, the Inter Canyon Fire Protection District, had a wildland interface fire in Deer Creek Canyon Park. And smoke was widely visible across the Denver metro area, and as the incident progressed and they had to do evacuations for the neighborhoods, they had strike team and task force orders that went out. And METCOM, which is South Metro Fire's dispatch center, is actually in charge of coordinating all of the strike team and task force deployments across the Colorado Front Range. So all of the seven major counties around Denver metro area have agreements in place where they will help each other with groups of resources on a mutual aid basis, free of charge for the first 12 hours of the incident. And the closest task force that needed to respond in this case was South Metro's. So I went to the staging area where the crews were meeting up initially, we call that a rendezvous location, and filmed some of those apparatus leaving. Actually, the rendezvous location changed in another time, so we didn't have all of the apparatus that responded at that spot at the same time, but you can kind of get an idea for how it works. They gather at a location with their strike team or task force leader, get briefed as to how the situation is gonna go, the radio channels that they're using and what the plan is going to be and then they go as a functional unit as a group to the fire scene staging area and get assigned from there so strike teams and task forces are different because a strike team has five of the same exact kind of resource with a leader and a task force can have different kinds of apparatus with a leader so in this case we had a wildland task force that was made up of type 6 engines, which are brush trucks, a type 3 engine, which we call a brush engine, and a water tender. That was also accompanied by our battalion chief, who was the strike team leader, a safety officer to help that battalion chief out with things that that person needed to do. And then our incident dispatch team also responded to the incident with the task force. They separated from the task force and started helping out with communications and mapping for the incident. When these big wildland fires occur, they tap out the resources very quickly of the agency that is running the fire and it's not uncommon for us to have to ask for assistance whether that's in our district or our neighbors having to do that so this program was set up as a way that we can do resource ordering relatively quick, quickly get a large number of apparatus and personnel on scene to help make it better I think the U.S. Postal Service is getting to know us pretty well at this point because... We love snail mail. This is awesome. <laughs> We're getting so many letters and it's so much fun to uh, send you guys patches back and stickers back. Uh, and we had a lot show up this week, which is really, really neat. Uh, the first one that I have, I've got a challenge coin and a patch from, is it Chico? Yeah, Chico. California. Actually, it's Chico, California. <laughs> and uh, a former South Metro fire chief is actually the chief 
at Chico Fire. So we're giving him a shout out because he's friends with us and, <laughs> and we talk often. Uh, and then a little further away, we've got Brandweer from the Netherlands. Mm. And then I've got a patch that I'm not even going to begin to try and pronounce <laughs> everything that's going on there. But it's from the Czech Republic and it is awesome that someone from the Czech Republic sent this to us and is watching. So thank you so much for that. Yeah, what do you we, have? We are trading from around the world. So it's amazing to do that. But we also yeah. have ones from right here in the US that are just important. So we have West Annapolis and this is in Maryland. We got two versions of their patch along with a really neat challenge coin. So thank you so much. We also have the Vertigo Communication Center in Glendale, California. So thank you so much. And I have to go back to last week because I totally <laughs> messed with this one up. I totally did. And Eric, it made me realize maybe I should go back to the fifth grade and learn how to uh, recognize states again. Yeah, so re remedial geography. Yes, we have Amboy Fire. You guys <laughs> get another one because I said Indiana last week and you're totally in Illinois. So my bad, but thank you so much again for trading with us. Like Eric said, we got so many this week and uh, we're going to have to start a new hose line for our patches now. Yeah, and uh, Brandweir and West Annapolis sent us t-shirts too, yes. which is fantastic. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> really, really appreciate it. It's awesome. So thanks for sticking with us and for following us along in our journey. Um, if you're interested in seeing the breaking news that's going on in real time, you can follow us on Twitter to see images and video of the scene when we're there. I know a lot of people are already following us on PulsePoint, so you know when things are going on. Uh, but Twitter's where we update to immediately for our community and our news, news uh, partners to see. And then we usually follow up on Facebook and Instagram with photographs as well. So you can stay in the loop throughout the week until the vlog comes out. Um, and then we always look forward to doing this at the end of the week. We'll see you guys next week. Bye.